only do we need to understand what verses are saying so that we can have a clear instruction of how to walk out life, but buddy, we have to have a clear understanding of what Scripture says so that we cannot allow Satan any opportunity to sow bitterness and or angst or anger towards God. Church family, thanks for hanging out with us. Thanks for tuning in. This is episode 12. And we've been doing a series of, does the Bible really say that? So guess yes. what we're going to do? We're just yes. going to go with some more verses and ask the question, does the Bible really say that? So episode 12 is, if we agree, it will be. <laughs> I was really trying to say it without. I know I'm were. not. I was not going to laugh. I'm trying not to laugh like that. <sighs> anyway, the thought is, if. You know, we agree it will be right. So, right. Um, and this comes this comes out of that passage out of Matthew eighteen, right? Yeah. And the, the 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 key verse is is verse nineteen. It says, "Again, I say to you, if two or three agree on earth about anything they ask, it will be done for them by my Father in heaven." Yes. And the concept is, if two or three agree, they can ask anything, and it'll be done. Absolutely, that's what it says, right? That 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 is what it says. However. We're learning, and we should all, I mean, this should be in all of our heads. It's in mind daily when we're reading the Bible, right? It's context, context, context. And by the way— It says where two or three agree. Anything that you could just— That is true, but when we take verses out of context, buddy, we get ourselves in trouble. So what I'd like to do is, one, let me give a shout-out to my mother-in-law. She keeps throwing these verses at me, and this is how this comes about. And I'm like texting Michael, hey, I got another one. So shout-out to her. She keeps me on my toes, so I appreciate it. But let, I think it's important. Let's read the full context of this particular passage, right? And to do that, it would be Matthew 18, 15 through 20. Yeah. Now, it, before we start reading, most uh, Bibles or translations have this passage listed as if your brother sins against you. Yes. Okay? So well, let's just go in with that mindset, and we'll start in uh, verse 15 that says, If your brother sins against you, Go and tell him his fault between you and him alone. If he listens to you, you have gained your brother. Verse 16 says, But if he does not listen, take one or two others along with you, that every charge may be established by the evidence of two or three witnesses. Verse 17, If he refuses to listen to them, tell it to the church. And if he refuses to listen even to the church, let him be to you as a Gentile and a tax collector. Interesting language right there. 18 says, truly, I say to you, whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven and whatever you loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. 19. Again, I say to you, if two of you agree on earth about anything they ask, it will be done for them by my father in heaven. And of course, verse 20 says, for where two or three are gathered in my name, there am I among them. Yeah. So is this dealing with as long as we have two or three people gathered, God will perform at our will? Um, side note, I've told you this before. The inverse of this is if I'm by myself, God doesn't respond to my prayers, which is an interesting thought. So, um, yeah, that already we're kind of off the rails a little bit in our, uh, thinking, right? Right. Well, and, and the way we hear it and to put it in, in, into legitimate context, the way we've heard it and, you know, most know that, that if they listen to us long enough, they know that I come from a, a very, uh, very deep Pentecostal background growing up sure. and, and then, um, you know, kind of by God's grace found my way into a, a more conservative and, 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 and accurate, uh, reading of God's word in many areas. Uh, sure. but we, the way we hear it is, you know, where two or three are gathered in my name, right. And you just hear a pastor or, or, or a leader of some kind, throw that out there. And then, yep. then you'll hear them say, we're going to bind this, you know, we bind this in the name of Jesus and we're going to loose yep. that. And we loose that in the name of Jesus. Sure. Or we hear them say that, you know, if we can just have two or three together and we can bind them and they combine all this and it has absolutely nothing to do with any of that. It's specifically yep. targeted, as you've said, to church discipline. This passage yep. is dealing with Christians who sin against other Christians. Sure. And obviously the obligation is on the offended brother to come and, and bring it, bring it to their attention. Yeah. And there's yeah. a, a, a real clear process, right? You sure. go to that individual, you tell them, Hey, listen, this really offended me. And let's be a little transparent. You, this, this is exactly what happened one time with you and I, you came to me. I remember the phone call. Well, <laughs> and you called and you said, Michael, this really offended me. And I, I, I had one job to listen because my brother was offended. Right. And, and you, you laid out and said, Michael, this is what it was. And, and 
we were able to work it, work through it at that level. But if I would have rebelled against it, it the next step would have been to bring a group of two or three sure. and approach me. And if I'd have still rebelled against that, then you bring it before the church. That's yeah. the process that God gave us. Yeah, and it, and it lays out very clear what the process is. And again, there's there's another verse we're going to focus on in just a second because it's really important. Uh, but guys, this is strictly about uh, dealing with those that have offended us, right? And you know, in church or outside mine, uh, you and I had a, as you said, a, a thing, right? And we that was outside the church. But we're also talking about inside the church how we should proceed when someone uh, is in sin, if there's an elder or pastor that's in sin, how we should go about that. And we saw a really good, uh, clear uh, way to do that recently, right? As most of you maybe or maybe not know, I would assume you know, Matt Chandler, who is of the Village Church, um, had to step down recently. And we'll show you a clip right now of that. Several months ago, um, a woman approached me um, outside here in the foyer, um, she had some concerns for how I was DMing on Instagram with a friend of hers. Um, I, I didn't think I had done anything wrong in that. My wife knew that. Her husband knew that. Um, and, and yet there were a couple of things that she said that were disorienting to me. Um, and so I immediately um, came into the room. I found Chairman of the Elder Board, Jason Swords, found Josh Patterson, other lead pastor, and said, this is what this person just told me. Uh, and then I went home. Lauren wasn't with me that night. And I told Lauren, this is what was said to me um, tonight. Um, from there, uh, the elders began to look into, because that's what they're supposed to do. Uh, because we cannot be a church where anyone uh, is above the scriptures and above the high heavenly call uh, into Christ Jesus. And so they looked into um, the, the conversation between me and um, this other woman, uh, and they had some concerns. Um, and those concerns were not that our messaging was romantic or sexual. It, it was that our conversations were unguarded and unwise. And because I don't ever want there to be secrets between us, the concerns were really about frequency and familiarity. He went to the appropriate elders, right? They then hired an outside law firm. I mean, they went through all these steps. And I think that's really important um, when we look at the scripture of how this needs to be conducted. Well, yeah. And I, I will say very clearly, and you know, he's here, he's here in Dallas, right? This is yep. a, a local church sure. for us. Sure. Um, most of us have either met him or been in his fellowship at one point or another just because yep. he has so many conferences and stuff yeah. there. Yeah. Um, um, most of us have some of his books and so forth and so on. Um, and, and there's people who are jumping all over this and, and to Matt's defense, it's none of your business. I, I don't know how else to say that. No, um, you know, th this has been handled and I, and I, he's not, he, we're not friends. I don't have his phone number. All right. No. But, but you know, this is very clear. He brought it before the people the, the it was brought to him by an individual. It was discussed. The families were involved. Everyone talked about it. We don't have the details, but right. the amazing thing was, I think it's an incredibly beautiful example because people are saying, well, it must be much worse than they're, than they're, right. than they're sharing. Yeah, this is a PR <laughs> stunt. They're covering something up. Yeah. yeah it, okay. Uh, the little bit that I know about Matt uh, and the little bit that I've been exposed to him, that would not be his heart. He would not step up to this point without being transparent. That's just sure. my personal opinion. Sure. But again, we just don't know. At yep. the end of the day, though, they're handling it right. Absolutely. From everything and we can see, yeah. or what we know, it's being yep. handled right. beautifully. And that was the point of showing the clip. And obviously, we're talking about church discipline. That's the first thing I thought of. So we're talking about church discipline. And then this news comes out. I'm like, well, this is a perfect example, right, of trying to handle these situations that are not fun. These can be really icky and sticky and they're hard to oh, deal with, right? Terrible, but yeah. they dealt with it. Uh, they get, you know, the Bible gives us an outline and then they walked in that. So I commend them for that. And, um, and, and to, to, to just kind of bring that full circle before sure. we continue. And that is that our, our obligation as brothers and sisters in Christ is to pray for the elders, to pray for that church, to pray for Matt, to pray for Amen. his family, to pray for the other people involved in their family. Yes. And just pray that God gets the glory in all of it as Matt yes. steps aside for a while and, and they go through the process. And then by God's grace, if everything is done correctly, can sure. be, can be put back be, in his position. Be our job absolutely. is to pray and not to tear down. Okay. Absolutely. But totally what's amazing. 
it's amazing to me is as sensitive. Think about how sensitive this whole thing is that we just discussed. Think of all sure. the people involved, right? Yeah. I mean, think of all the lives involved. I've been to that fellowship. It's a big fellowship. Okay. He's on the national stage. You think of all the people that's involved. And we have people in the church that grab verse 18 and grab verse 19. Yes. Yeah. And totally blow it up. They, they, right. they take the whatever you bind on earth should be bound in heaven. Loose on earth, you loose in heaven, and the two or three agree it'll be done for you, and they take it for their own personal agenda, specifically usually for healing and yes. for restoration. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah we it, and I said this last week, it's amazing how we've taken verses and attached them to satisfy our material uh, wants and or needs in our own personal life, right? And that's what we've done. And you brought up verse 18, and this is a pivotal verse, right? And it's really important to understand this. Let me read verse 18. It says, truly, I say to you, whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. So if I'm just if I just read that verse, Michael, I have the authority to bind and loose whatever, right? Yeah. Correct. Well, you could see, and you can see if I was looking for something to, to isogene, in on. other words, yep. to read into yep. what, what sure. I wanted, you could grab that in a heartbeat and boy, would it fit the need, right? Sure. But Absolutely. we've got to, we've got to back up where this really comes from, which is two yep. chapters earlier, Matthew yep. chapter 16. And we see a very similar verse in verse 19. I'll give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven and whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. And whatever you uh, bind uh, loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Yep. Jesus here is speaking, and this is where we're going to have to do a full contextual thing here again. But yep. Jesus is speaking to Peter and indirectly to the apostles, right? That's right. And, and in order to get this right, We've got to now read that section in context. So Absolutely. let's pick up Matthew 16, verses 13 to 20. Keep in sure. mind, we're focusing here on the binding and yes. loosening phrase that's yep. so badly used today. Matthew right. 16, 13 through 20. Go ahead. Why don't you read verse 13? I've been now, when Jesus it. came into, in, into the district of Caesarea Philippi, he asked the disciples, who do you say that the Son of Man is? And they said, some say John the Baptist, others say Elijah, and others, Jeremiah or the prophets. He said to them, but who do you say I am? Mm -hmm. Simon Peter replied, you are the Christ, the son of the living God. And Jesus answered him, blessed are you, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my father who is in heaven. And I tell you, you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. And I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Then he strictly charged his disciples to tell no one that he yeah. was the Christ. Amen. That's the context. That's the context. And this is very interesting to me. So we're using the same language, whatever you bind, right? Whatever you loose, but kind right. of two different approaches, right? One is talking about church discipline, correct? We just talked about that, Matthew 18. Matthew 16, we're talking about something a little different, right? We're talking it, it, about the keys. And, and, and this gets into some, uh, maybe some stuff we've never really talked about or most people haven't thought thought about what the keys are. Yeah. And, it, and uh, because we do the 40,000 foot view, right? It's hard not to get off in the weeds in this. Okay. It really yeah, this is. This would be three or four episodes if we really so, want So we're going to try really hard gang to, to make this work. Right. I yes. said, gang, I just showed my age, didn't I? Right. Anyway. That's, uh, <laughs> that's why you have me to help keep the, yeah. the median, hey, median average like low. 59. It shows all the time. Anyway, this is, this is, this is really amazing things. This is this, these words here are so powerful because of Peter's faith, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Flesh and blood hasn't revealed this to you, right? Because of Peter's faith, he has the right now to enter the kingdom of heaven. And 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 Jesus gives him the symbolism of keys. Yes. What what how did that happen? What are these symbolizing? Well, it's it's the word of God that is revealed to Peter, right, as to who Jesus is. I mean, at the core, it's a part of the gospel. Amen. And now Peter is going to be preaching and the apostles are going to be preaching the gospel. And as they preach the gospel, it is going to open the doors to those who believe to the kingdom of heaven. 
Yes. And it's going to shut the doors to those who don't believe. And the symbolism is the keys is basically the word of God. And yes. the word of God declared to those who will either believe or not believe opens or closes the doors of heaven. Now, yeah. this is, there's something here that's really important we've got to remember. And that is the book of Matthew and who it's written to. Matthew is written to the Jews. Okay, so a lot of the language used in Matthew is keyed to the Jews. Sure. Uh, very specifically, the word kingdom of heaven is used, I, I don't catch me off guard here, 26 or something times in the book. The word kingdom is used, I think, 50 times in the book of Matthew. Uh, I have to look that up to get accurate, but I think that's really close. And, and in this case, the expression bind and mm. loose were common to Jewish lingual, right. uh, legal phraseology. Yeah. It's yeah. the meaning, basically, to declare something forbidden right. or to declare it aloud. Yeah. So binding and loosing meant forbidden or allowed. Sure. Now. Yeah, and... And go ahead. Sorry, go ahead. You had I, I was just gonna. I was just gonna read it in the context of the Amplified yeah, Bible. Yeah, absolutely. So the Amplified Bible writes the verse this way: Whatever you bind, mm -hmm. forbid, declare to be improper and unlawful on earth, will have already been bound in heaven. And whatever you loose, permit, declare lawful on earth, will have already been loosed in heaven. Jesus is teaching his disciples and, and ultimately the apostles that they had a special task here on earth. Okay. Mm -hmm. Their words had authority. And as it was, as it's recorded in the new Testament, it was going to reflect God's will for the church. Sure. Ultimately these men are going to write down what we have as God's word today. Yeah. And what was declared as authority was given to them by their words. It was loosed. What was restricted was bound. Binding and loosing had to do with the authority of Scripture. So then let me let me ask you this. Do when we talk about the keys and we look at it from that standpoint, right? Um, what what do we how do we then uh, take away from these verses and how we live our daily life, right? So to super simplify it without getting off in the weeds of the Greek or maybe into some deep theological discussion, <laughs> it, it, it very simply, we as the church have an amazing opportunity. We get to share the gospel with our friends. Amen. We Amen. get to share the word of God. And as we share the word of God, we loose or free or provide the freedom and the opportunity the that God's word brings. If we don't share it, they continue to live as it were bound. Sure. Now, some would say, Michael, there's no way I'm going to agree with that interpretation. Well, we certainly invite you to do your own homework. Always check <laughs> us. We're, we're lay people who do homework just like you do. <laughs> yes. Yes. But the, the binding and loosing here, the way this is related, has to do with the word of God and declaring the gospel. Amen. Amen. And isn't that the, the wonderful hope that he's and the task that he's given us, right? Those that are... Um, his children, that we have the opportunity in our daily life. And when you look at it through that lens to have, we have the opportunity to share with someone the keys. There you go. Right? We there you have go. the opportunity to share with someone the keys. Yes. And how amazing is that? That yeah, when and, you look at it do. in the proper context, it changes from, I can bind and loosen whatever I want selfishly or... I can look at it in its proper context and go, I have the opportunity to share the keys for someone to open you up. You have the keys to the yeah. kingdom. It's not unique yeah. to just Peter. It's you have the word of God. And yeah. as you share that and you live your life, as your life is the loudest testimony you're ever going to have, right? Absolutely. Far more than your words. As you live your life, if you were out loud, okay, yeah. you're sharing the keys of the kingdom. And when someone says, I don't know how you got through that. I don't know what that's about. I don't know how you... What is different about as they see something different in you, yes. in your beautiful bride, in Charlotte Rose, in Jen, sure. in my son, as they see something unique and different, they go, I want that. Those are the keys, and that Amen. unlocks eternity for them. And that's what it means, my friend. Amen. And that's amazing. That's so it's so cool, the symbolism of that, right? And and to your point about it being an example, you just take Peter's life, right? After this. 
yeah. and all the different, I mean, you go through Acts, right? All through Acts, Pentecost. He was doing the very thing that he was commanded to do. And ultimately what we're commanded to do. And, and how we get from the keys of the kingdom representing the word of God and sharing God's love Amen. and grace and the gospel to others to, yeah. um, you know, I'm going to bind this disease. I'm going to, and it's, it's not only is it not there, it's not even close. Right. Yeah. You know, yeah. And, but, but then we run into another problem in verse 19. If two or agree, three agree on anything, it'll be done. Yeah, okay. so we've, we've hit 18, and now we got to deal with 19, because as we said earlier, um, so all I need is two or three people, right? Again, yeah. if we're going to just take the verse, buddy, if we're just taking the verse, then in every situation, as long as you have two or three people, it has to go the way that those two or three people agree, right? And we right. both let's, know that doesn't happen. Okay, let, let's do let's do a let's do an easy thing here. Let's take an easy yeah. layer off this cake. Okay, let's do one that's easy. We've okay. done because we've covered this in the past, and that is that when we pray, right? We've talked about how less clear scriptures are governed by more clear, right? We're, you're you're solid on that, and so am I. Yeah. So when we pray, there's some guidance that we have to when we pray for anything, right? And I'll just, 1 John chapter 5, verse 13, I write these things to you who believe in the name of the Son of God that you may know that you have eternal life. And this is the confidence that we have toward him, that if we ask anything according to his will, yes, he hears us. And if we know that he hears us in whatever we ask, we know that we have the request that we have asked of him. Okay, let's let's take the first layer off of this. When you ask or petition the Lord in prayer, it's got to be in Jesus' name and according to his will. We've covered it in other videos, but we just want to have yeah. we want to remind everyone of that. Yeah. We're still tying this now, verse 19, back into the discipline of the wayward brother or sister, right? That's right. And yes, it, and we we must handle I can't say that strong enough. We've got to handle these things so carefully, right? God Absolutely. gives us clear direction here. Now, look, when he talks about two or three are gathered, we as we pointed out earlier in the passage or earlier in the in the deal tonight that you know people say two or three will pray for it and it'll be done. Yeah. But this is referring to to you go to the to the individual, talk to them, then you bring two or three, yes. right? And then if yeah. they don't, then you go to the church. Yep. Verse 16 has the two or three witnesses making the accusation, right? And and if you look at it real carefully, verse 20. Uh, it seems that the two or three there echoes that same sure. principle of confronting yeah. sin in right. the church, right? Yeah. Look, this all comes out of the Old Testament where it says it's Deuteronomy. An ac yeah. accusation uh, from a single individual is sufficient to bring action in a criminal case. However, two or three witnesses who agree are sufficient to establish the matter, right? Yeah. It's, the, it's yeah. the same idea. And yeah. Jesus the Lord Jesus applies the same approach to the church. Yes. He's saying, look, you bring two or three right. together there. And this is so amazing. Have the confidence that I'm there in your midst, yeah. right? I'm yeah. there with you as you bring this against the brother and we work together to hold him or her yeah, accountable. I, yeah. I love, I love that. The word confidence, right? Because that's really what it is, is if you follow yeah. my instruction and you handle this correctly, yes. know that I am with you. You can go in confidence to that individual because you're doing it the correct way. And just a side note, I absolutely love the more I study how so much of the, and we know this like on the surface level, but when you dig into these verses, how much of the New Testament reflects the old testament right it's just oh, a constant continuation and i my, absolutely my, love that it provides yeah. hope for me it makes me excited i, I, I know just, my, I my just love favorite it. my favorite description of that was put far better by a more brilliant scholar a uh, wonderful man who used to say you know the old testament is a dimly is a beautifully furnished dimly lit room and the new testament turns the light on yes. right i just yes. i love that image yes. right yes. so going back to verse 17 in our original passage that we started with matthew 18 yes, 15 through 20. Now, when you read it, if he refuses to listen to them, tell them to the church. And if he refuses to listen to them, then uh, let him be as it were a Gentile or tax collector. Truly, yeah. I say to you, whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. Loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. And again, I say to you, if two or three are, are you know, agree on earth about anything you ask, it will be done for them by my father 
For where two or three are gathered in my name, there I am among them. This whole thing is a beautiful picture of the sensitivity of bringing accusation against your brother or sister and then bringing church discipline against them or or not against them, but but to the situation and helping to restore them and the confidence that Jesus is there with us in the process as we care for the church and love on one another. Amen. No, it's a, it's a, to your words, a beautiful example of that. And what has happened is we take this beautiful example of how to walk in these delicate situations in life, right? And we have turned them into how can that feed what I want? And we completely miss what the Lord is trying to show us uh, because we're trying to make verses what they're not. And we've talked about this now for two or three weeks, that when we do that, it creates an expectation or, uh, well, exp- I could, uh, it does. It creates an expectation of God that is not what he was trying to tell us. And it, ca- and, it and just just as a warning to all of us that when we do this, and I firmly believe this, we're opening up for Satan to use those to cause you to question your relationship with God. When you go with two or three and you go to pray for somebody and you're expecting healing because you're interpreting this verse like this, and that unfortunately that person is not healed on this side, but healed in heaven, Satan will use that. And we have to be so careful. Not only do we need to understand what verses are saying so that we can have a clear instruction of how to walk out life, but, buddy, we have to have a clear understanding of what Scripture says so that we cannot allow Satan any opportunity to sow bitterness and or angst or anger towards God that's not was never there to begin with. And you and I, boy, I couldn't agree with that more. And you and I have both lived through situations and been with even family members who have gotten very angry and bitter. I can say this personally against God because of something that transpired. And they said, but I believed and I hoped and I prayed. I did everything I was supposed sure. to be. And I, and I and I declared and I decreed and I and I brought two or three and I bound and I loosed and it, it did everything, still, everything yeah. it told me to do, right? Now, let's be clear. If this is the first video you're ever watching with us, we believe in healing. We believe in restoration. Oh we believe in a God that we are supposed to pray. We're to intercede yes. for each other. We're to yes, bring, please. we're to come together and pray over one another. And, 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 in Jesus name and, and for by God's will. And, and if the Amen. living God of all creation chooses to raise them up, fantastic. Yes. Awesome. We had a part in that. If yes. the living God of all creation takes them into eternity and heals them on the other side. Awesome. Either way they win. That's okay? right. Either That's way right. they win. That's what right. we've got to do is be accurate with scripture and Absolutely. not put this and pit Absolutely. this, as you said, against God and his purpose for sure. our own glory. That was never the intention of scripture. Amen. The difference between good exposition and eisegesis, the difference is one, we're taking scripture and letting it speak to us. The other, we're reading into scripture what we want right. it to say. And buddy, we've done a lot of that in the church today. Absolutely. And we, and because we've done that so much in the church, we don't really know. And I will include myself in this because none of us are exempt to this to some extent, but we have, we don't even really know what the word says. In many cases, you are right. We have so distorted it. We we don't know what it says. We just have heard it for many years. So we just go with it and then we try to live it out. And then it causes this, as I said, this anger, disappointment, whatever. If, If there was ever anything besides sharing the gospel with those that are watching, please hear me to make sure you understand the context and it's emotional for me because I've walked this road. I was so angry at God in a certain situation in my life. Yeah. Yeah. Because I said, my pastor told me I, if I did this, this situation would not happen. And it happened. And I was so angry at God to the point where my wife one day said, you know, you don't talk about God and, um, you know, Read your word like you used to. Yeah. Yeah. And it was all an expectation I put on him because I didn't understand the word. It's that important. Uh, buddy, and I, and I, I love you sharing that. I, I'll never forget the night that I was pulled on stage at, a, at one of the meetings because of my ear. And I was pulled on stage and they grabbed me and shook me and threw me around and said, the only reason that ear is not healed is because you don't have the faith. 
The only reason that here is not healed is because you don't have. And I remember walking, sitting on that stage, just crumbled and crushed because I couldn't meet what God needed from me wow. as a young man. And that is not what God's here for. That's right. We give him the authority in our life. We give him absolute authority. We let him be Amen. sovereign and let him rule and reign in our lives for his purpose and his glory and let Amen. his word speak louder than anything else. And when his word speaks, the truth will be known. Absolutely. Won't you pray us out, buddy? Father, we love you. Thank you for your faithfulness. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. Father. And honestly, thank you for your goodness because a good and yeah. just God has to judge sin and a good and just God can never wink and take things casually. And father, you've given us your amazing word. And as we strive and work and study and research to try to find the, the, the core truths of what you've given us in your word. We pray that you'll continue to guide our steps, that your word will be a lamp to our feet, a light to our paths. Amen. Father, we love you. Thank you for the time we've had together tonight. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, buddy. As always, thanks for hanging out with this Bridge family. Like, subscribe. Q Michael, do the pointy thing. Q Michael, oh, do the yeah, pointy yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Like, subscribe, share it. Uh, comment in all seriousness we like to do the fun fun stuff but please do those things it helps get the video out there um, and again we're not trying to share the video to more people to make it about us we want no. to share the gospel we want to share truth um, and the more people that see it i believe that uh, god's going to use it to change and impact the world that's our goal thanks for hanging out with us catch us on a audio podcast every thursday and we'll check you next time see you guys Thanks for watching. No matter where you find yourself in this moment, God's promise of forgiveness is real. Your life can have amazing purpose and eternity with the living God of all creation is all available to you. It's time we turn to truth. It's time we turn to Jesus.